there. Thank you so much for being here. My name's Anna. I am just a lover of makeup and I want to talk about it and I want to share my experiences with other people who love makeup as much as I do. So today I wanted to share with you the new Hutopian Dream Palette from Pat McGrath. So if you want to see some comparison swatches and my thoughts and feelings, this was a ride, then just keep watching. So I'm a huge Pat McGrath fan. I have all of the Mothership palettes. When I saw that she was coming out with the Mothership 9 Utopian Dream, I had to pick it up. This is my favorite packaging. <laughs> I love her packaging. It's really, I mean, it's extra in like the best way. And this just had the like, you know, rainbows and sparkles and like the crazy whimsical fairyland, but also space, just so good. When I first saw the teaser on Instagram, I was like, oh my gosh, this looks like it's gonna be perfect because of the rainbow aspect and I thought oh it's gonna be kind of colorful I don't know I was expecting something and I heard that I've heard this from a lot of people actually um, just that they were expecting more color more like dynamic color and then when the reveal happened it's not that I was disappointed it was just that I was kind of surprised it, it just wasn't what I was expecting it looks like this And there is some color. I mean, this guy right here, you know, that's like purple, blue, there's color, there's pink, there's this coral here that is so pretty. Um, but I don't know, it just, it wasn't, it just wasn't what I was expecting. And then I thought, oh, well there are some really pretty pretty shades in there and I thought okay you know that that purpley blue that's gonna be really pretty they look really pretty and I was really excited for it um this was actually I made this my my lock screen on my phone for the last month or so which fangirl I guess but anyway I just love love loved like I want to be this person right yeah it's just the style of it it's just so cool it's a little bit 80s I think I think it's like 80s space age mm. and there's a little flying saucer anywho i actually set an alarm for 5 55 on the day of launch because i'm on the west coast so launch was at 9 a.m east coast which is 6 a.m west coast i know i know but i got up five minutes before launch because I thought, oh, I'm gonna try to, you know, be one of the first people to order this and then, you know, hopefully I'll get it really, really quickly. And then when I opened it up, I was really disappointed that the box was kind of trash. Whoops. They look, you know, they're supposed to look like this. Not, not that. It's supposed to like hold the palette in there. Like, yeah, and it's just, anyway. Um, The ones that I've gotten from the Pat McGrath website have been a little trashed like this, which surprises me because I would think that they, you know, they obviously take pride in what they do. I mean, to make the packaging, you know, this, Lux, I would expect it to be perfect. Again, this is not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, just my observations. Um, when I get them from the Pat McGrath website, they tend to be messed up. The boxes tend to be sort of janky. Whereas when I order from Sephora, the boxes are always in great shape. I think without exception. I may have gotten one from Sephora that was a little bit damaged, but in general, they're so much better when I get them from Sephora. So 
Maybe I should just learn my lesson and wait till they come to Sephora. Just because the boxes, I collect them, I keep them. It's A, a lot easier to find them in my drawer. <laughs> but also, it's fun to have the artwork on them. I just really enjoy it and it's a part of the experience for me. That was a little disappointing. I was like, I'm just gonna set it aside. I'll deal with this later. I just don't, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna do it right now. But I started getting curious and I was like, well, I can at least do my swatch comparisons and figure out, you know, what I wanna swatch for you guys and show you as far as um, what shades in other palettes might match or be similar to the shades in this palette. And so as I started swatching, I started getting that like, wow. Um, yeah, some of these shades, mwah, like, dang, they're really impressive. That's the thing, they're really impressive. Pat McGrath does a great job. Okay, so I'm getting impressed by the swatches and I'm like, wow, those colors are stunning. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna put these on my eyes. I do a look and it was okay. And I was like, I don't know. I'll try to put, actually, I'll, I'll put a photo up um, of that look. And so I washed it off and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try another look. And then another one and I was like, why do I just keep looking like I have a bruised eye? <laughs> I was like, are the, I just, and I was confused by the color story once again. I was like, why do these just look, look like I have, I'm bruised? I think the issue for me was, I think that this shade, which I really wanted to use in every one of the looks, Something about that wasn't looking good on me. And I don't know if it was the combinations I was using or if it was like one particular shade because I definitely used this shade a lot in the looks because it's the deepest matte. And so I thought, well, I think there's something about that shade that is not flattering on my particular skin tone. And honestly, after doing my makeup today, using this today, I was stunned. I was like, wow, that's beautiful. I, this is the look today. And I really like it. <laughs> and I didn't use, I didn't use the shade. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to play around with that, but I really like the way that this turned out. I love this. I think this is so pretty. I really, really like it. So I'll just tell you briefly about the look that I did. I first took shade Extreme Plum Noir and I just put it all over my lid and did a bit of sort of a wing, winged out kind of shape and then I sort of blended the edges of that with Secret Eden and just blended that out and diffused that just a little bit. And then I took Skin Show Nude Ecstasy and I put that on my brow bone. And then I took Secret Eden just on my lower lash line and that's all I did for that, which turned out really pretty. And then I covered my lid with Cosmic Bloom. And then over that, I took Astral Venusian Orchid and put that all over my lid and then also into my inner corner. And then I did put a sort of plum um, liner on my um, on my waterline on the top and then sort of a pink color on my waterline on the bottom. Um, just mascara and I really like the way it turned out. One thought, oh, and I, I will say, you know, everything blended out really nicely. You know, her formula is great. It works great. I Formula wise, these are great. Every, every shade and I have used all of them in various looks. The shades blended out like a dream. They, you know, everything just 
worked really well. I did get a bunch of fallout from the astral shade. You can probably see it on my cheeks, but I actually don't mind that at all. It doesn't bother me. I like having glitter all over my face. But if that's, you know, something that you don't like, you might want to do your eyes first. I was surprised. So I used, you know, the deepest shade in this palette, um, this guy, in um, all over my lid. And some of it, you know, is under some shimmers and things, but I did actually take it at the end and like deepen that up. And it's not very deep. You know, I'm a light skin tone and I just wonder, I wonder how this would work on a deeper skin tone. I don't know. I, you know, I don't think you're going to get a lot of depth with this if you're even much more than like medium because I didn't even get a lot of depth. So, I don't know. I was a little bit surprised by that because usually there's at least one deeper shade, you know, a black or a, a dark plum or a dark brown or something like that. But I don't know. I can't really, um, I can't really speak to that. But I'm curious about that. As far as would I recommend this one? If you collect the Pat McGrath palettes and you want to add it to your collection, I say, yeah, absolutely, go for it. I mean, it's a great palette, but is it the best one? No, not in my opinion. I don't think so. I think that the color story is a little bit strange. I just think there are better ones. If you want to dip your toe into Pat McGrath, I would go for Bronze Seduction or Sublime would be a good one, or even some of the quads. Um, I think Eternal Eden is one of them. Or even if you want, you know, that colorful vibe, um, there's the Nocturnal Nirvana quad, or um, even Divine Rose 2 had some pops of color in there, or Midnight Sun. I don't know. I just don't think this is number one. I don't think this is on top. If I were to rank all of my palettes today, this wouldn't be at the bottom. It's certainly not my least favorite one, but it's it's not my favorite one. So that's where I'm at with that. As far as the formula and everything, great. It's, you know, it's, it's absolutely 100% Pat McGrath quality. You know, it's, it's pretty. I just don't think it's number one. Um, I don't even think it's in like the top third. Um, I do have a ranking video and I'll link a card to that if you wanted to see that. Um, it does not include this palette, but this palette would probably be in my top 10, but definitely like somewhere between six and 10. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be even in my top five, I don't think. Um, anyways, if you wanted to watch that, um, it's there for you. And I will just mention really quickly, I did get this, um, intensifies artistry wand and I totally forgot to use it today when I was doing my, <laughs> I was going to do one eye with one way without. So I'm probably gonna have to do that in another video. Might do some swatches with this, but I forgot to use it on my eyes. Um, anyways, Let's get into some comparison swatches um, and see what is alike from the Utopian Dream with um, some of the other palettes. Uh, disclaimer, I do not have all of her palettes. I have a fair amount. I have 12, 13, 15, something like that. But I'm going to show you kind of the most similar shades that I found in doing comparison swatching. So if you're curious about that, let's let's get into it so for the shade swatch comparisons i'm just gonna go shade by shade and show you some that i found that seemed pretty similar or not even pretty similar just the ones that were the closest and there was actually only a couple that i thought were pretty close matches so <clears throat> this first one is skin show nude ecstasy right here i think this has a very it's almost a rose gold sheen to it. And 
there were a couple that were kind of similar, but not particularly. So from Subversive, so many palettes. Okay, so from Subversive, this shade here, which is Skin Show Fever. And in the pan it looked kind of similar, but on my hand you can see it's much more gold. Much more gold. And then the next one is from Midnight Sun. And it's Skin Show Moon Glow right here. And I think this was the closest one. Um, but it looks to me like it has a little bit more of like a lavender instead of pink. But that's probably the closest. And the Divine Rose One Skin Show Nude, which was more of kind of a champagne color. So really nothing too close. I think the closest was this one from Midnight Sun. I'll try to swatch these next ones in a little better order so that the closer ones are closest to the shade. So the next shade, Secret Eden. It's matte, light matte shade. Such a pretty shade. So that one. And her, her mattes don't swatch as well, but that's not an indication of how well they work. And this one, I don't believe I found a very good match at all. And I did include this palette in there just because I had it. Um, if something was close-ish. And this shade, Venusian Orchid, was probably the closest I could find. But again, it's a little bit more pink like a pinky purple and the Secret Eden shade from the Utopian Dream palette is a little bit more warm toned and has a bit more brown. And then in the Eternal Eden quad, the shade Earthly Delight here was much darker. And then Fleur Fantasia Lotus Paradise Oop. was actually much lighter. It looked a little bit more similar in the pan to me, but actually that one is maybe the closest one, but it is a little lighter. And I don't think it has quite as much pink. A little bit less Pink. So there's that. I didn't think that those were very close at all. Oh, that Fleur Fantasia. A little bit. Anyways, I didn't think any of them were close enough to call them a dupe by any mean or a repeat. And then this third shade, Bronze Desire. So that's Bronze Desire. And the only one that I thought was even close to that was the Decadence shade Inferno. But Inferno is definitely brighter. It's a little more metallic. And the next shade in the Utopian Dream. Oh, you know what? I never did this. I was waiting because it's so satisfying. To do it on camera. <laughs> also, ooh, that smells like chemicals. It's fine. It's the adhesive. Okay, back to the shades. The next shade is Bronze Solaris 005. It's the shade right here. This one I couldn't get to swatch as well yesterday either. I guess it's okay, but it was a little bit light. It's a little bit transparent. I think it it's almost more of a topper shade. I mean, it does have a base shade, 
there's that one. And I found that I couldn't find anything that was a close match for that either, but the Sublime Bronze 005. Actually, this one was, was a bit close. It actually seemed a little more opaque to me and a little bit more yellow. The Bronze Solaris 005 is a little more sparkly and then the Bronze 005 is a little more metallic. And there were a couple, I guess I'll show you, these weren't really that close, but shades Bronze Nebula and Bronze from Celestial Divinity. So this one up here and then this one right here were somewhat similar, but they were both a little bit more orange, a little deeper. Those are all pretty close though. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, it's almost like the Bronze Solaris shade from the Utopian Dream palette is a little bit more ethereal looking. It almost looks, like I said, a little sparklier, whereas the other ones are a little more metallic. And moving on to the next shade, this might be my favorite shade in the palette. This speaks to little girl Anna a lot, <laughs> a lot. And this one is called Astral Venusian Orchid. And this one's pretty magical. I mean, mm, that's very pretty. It has like a pink base and then that gold green shimmer. It kind of reminds me of Terra Moon's Antares a little bit, but it's actually, actually, I kind of want to compare it. I'm going to compare it. Oh, interesting. It's not as... The Terra Moon shade is not as sparkly. And that's what I was actually expecting, but I mean, I was expecting them to be equally as sparkly, but I'm impressed. That Pat McGrath shade is even more sparkly than the Terra Moon shade that I'm obsessed with. So that's, that's amazing. So the one that seemed the most similar to me was in Ritualistic Rose, the shade Astral Rose Orchid here. So that one's sort of similar colors, but it has, it has a similar base color, I think. It looks, you can see right there, it looks a little bit more purple. And the Astral Venusian Orchid looks a little bit more red. In the base or magenta it's almost like more of a lavender on the other one and then the shift that glittery shift also the venusian astral venusian orchid from the utopian dream palette seems a little shinier sparklier and the glean on it that that shift is more gold Whereas the one from Ritualistic Rose looks a little more bronze to me, a little more orange. So definitely not, not the same. And then I thought actually, and this particular shade is in two different palettes. It's in Divine Rose One and Midnight Sun. And I'll swatch them both because I thought they actually swatched a little differently, but maybe that was my imagination. But that one is called Astral Solstice. So this is Divine Rose 1, and this is a very pretty color. It doesn't have as much of a shift. And then Midnight Sun. And again, that is literally the same shade. And actually in this light, I'm not even seeing it anymore. It looked the same yesterday, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess the, the shimmer in it, the glean in it is similar. Definitely. I think that Utopian Dream shade, the Astro Venusian Orchid, is quite a standout. It's, it's my favorite one. <laughs> and lots of fallout with that. Just I can see I can see the glitter 
you know, flying through the air. And then it's also, you know, it's left my hand very shiny. <laughs> Next shade, and this is the deepest one in the palette. In the pan, I didn't think that this looked as much like it had a plum undertone, but when swatching it, I really see the plum. And when it's on my eyes, I see that plum undertone. It's a pretty color. Again, I didn't think it was very deep for the deepest shade in the palette. Almost a bit mahogany plum. And then from Divine Rose One, Extreme Mahogany was the closest one that I found. But you can see that one is definitely, it's a little actually more pigmented, a little deeper and more brown. It doesn't have, have as much of that plum, you know, purple tint to it. And then from Risque Rose, this shade Mink Noir. And I think this one, yeah, this one kind of has that plum undertone, but it's much deeper. So yeah, not even close. <laughs> And the next shade from the Mothership 9 Utopian Dream Palette is Cosmic Bloom. Again, super pretty shade. These are all individually very beautiful. I just don't know how well they go together. But wow, that is, that is quite beautiful. And it almost has a duochrome type of shift a little bit. I can see sort of orange and pink in there. Definitely there wasn't a shade that was identical to this in, in my swatches. The first, the closest one was actually from the Celestial Divinity palette. It's called Cosmic. It's this one right here. I think the reason it looked the most similar is because it has, oh wow, yeah, in this light, definitely not even. It's much lighter, it just has similar coloring where it has that pink shift with that orange. Another couple, just for comparison's sake, are, so this is a shade called Rose Dusk, and it's actually in both the Sublime palette and in the Divine Rose 1 palette. And I'm switching both because I thought they looked a little different, but you can see the color is similar, but the finish is much different. They're more of a satin and the cosmic bloom from the Utopian Dream palette is much more sparkly and has that sort of duochrome. I should have a lot for this one. <laughs> I don't have to use my other hand. So from Eternal Eden, from the Eternal Eden quad, this is the shade Forbidden Fruit. And you can see it's actually a pretty similar color. That might be the closest one actually now that I'm looking at it. The light definitely changes things, but you can see it actually has that sort of red base. And then the pink sheen over it. Moving on to the next shade in the Utopian Dream palette. And I, I really, Again, I love this color. I It's really beautiful. And this one is just a deep coral. It's so pretty. And it's called Shockwave. But it is a very deep coral, beautiful shade. Really a beautiful shade. I couldn't find anything close to this one. The two that I swatched were Temptation from Eternal Eden is this here. This one's much pinker and less orange. There's more blue in it. And then from the Divine, and it's funny, when I first saw this, I totally was like, oh, that is a shade similar to the Divine Rose too, but it's very much not. I thought it was gonna be close to this shade, but it's not at all. And this shade is called Naked Blush. And I thought that would be really similar. It's kind of similar, but it's, Definitely lighter and more muted. This one's much more of like a saturated color. Shockwave. And it's a little deeper as well, I think. But yeah, it's just brighter. Very pretty color, very pretty. 
still, like I said, I'm having a hard time getting it to work on my eyes. It kind of just made things look bruisey. But actually, you know, I think this palette makes my eyes look very blue. Often they look very gray. And I think they look very blue today. And I bet you that color, if used correctly, maybe all over the lid or something, I could probably get it to make my eyes look very blue, which, which I like. That's fun. It's so crazy to me how what I wear affects my eye color. Because, yeah, wow, they look so blue today. I don't know. <laughs> now here's another stunner. Beautiful, beautiful shade. It's a duochrome. And this one is called Blitz Sex Stream. And oh my goodness, it's just, there's, it's actually, it's a multi-chrome. There's some green and red and gold and pink. It's really a stunning, stunning shade. Kind of looks like it has a grayish green base to it. Oof. And I thought, you know, it doesn't look exactly like Sextraterrestrial shade from Divine Rose 2, but it does have some similar shifts. It's almost like the warmer version, but you can see it's, it's a bit similar, but again, The shade from Utopian Dream is more red, whereas the shade from Divine Rose 2 is more pink. I wonder if you can see that on my fingers too. Oh yeah. Hmm. Actually the shift doesn't show up as well. Hmm. Peace. Ooh, there we go. If I just back them up. So from Divine Rose 2, I actually thought that this shade, which is called Divine Dusk, had a similar coloring to it. Again, it's not quite as shifty and not quite as bright, but sort of a similar color. And then from Eternal Eden, this shade Forbidden Fruit, and that one has a similar tone as well to just the color, that reddish base, but again, I don't think any of these are really even close. It's a pretty spectacular color. But just thought it was fun to compare the colors. Okay, and last but not least, we have Astral Amethyst Moon shade right here, which is so stunning. My goodness, it really is a standout. <laughs> but it makes me look bruised. I don't know. I don't know. I will figure it out. I hope. <laughs> it's much more of a topper shade. It doesn't have a lot of a base color in there. Kind of that orangey pink with a shimmery, shimmery, a shimmery lavender blue. And this one was interesting because the Blur Fantasia, I think it is called Lavender Blue, has similar colors, but it's a very different formula. This one right here. It's got that lavender and baby blue, but it's kind of more of a satin finish, but kind of similar colors actually. These would actually look kind of pretty together. So then this shade from Subliminal called VR Violet is a bit similar. It doesn't look quite as sparkly and the base looks a little bit more orange and less pink. So there's probably like less blue in it, but that topper, oops, I'm gonna hide, hide my face. <laughs> um, the topper sparkle that Lavendery blue is pretty similar. And then the last one is in the Risque Rose. And I'm almost just showing you this because I love this color so much. This is Lavendering. It has a similar vibe, but much less pink. It's more of a silvery gray.
and I'll insert some arm swatches of the shades from the Utopian Dream palette alongside the closest matches that I could find, which as you could see, there weren't actually a lot that were um, very similar. I want to do one more thing before I sign off. This could be a very long video. And I thought we could just swatch a couple shades with this intensifies. Oh, also, if you end up picking this up, you have to push on this little thing to like make it come out. And I pushed this button probably 150 times before it started coming out. So if you do pick this up, um, just be aware that sometimes it can take a while because I was like, oh no, is this broken? But it wasn't. I tried and tried again. So I'm going to put this between these lines here because it's so clear that I won't be able to see it if, if I don't put it in between the lines. So we'll do this shade called Blitz Extreme and then Astral Venusian Orchid. And I'm just gonna swatch those over the primer and next to it to see if we can tell a difference in at least what the swatch looks like. I think it might look a little bit more intense. Those black lines are really throwing me off though. Let me, let me put those around the other swatches too. Um, yeah, yeah, I can see more intensity. So this is the one with, with the primer, that's without, and then with the primer and without. And I can definitely see a difference, especially in that astral shade. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, especially in the in the glittery sparkly shades. Okay, interesting. And I will try that on my eyes next time. Well, thank you so much for joining me um, for this chat and some swatches on the Pat McGrath Mothership 9 Utopian Dream palette. I like it. I don't, I'm not obsessed with it. And I do love this look that I got today. I think it turned out really pretty. Um, I'll have to play around with some of those other colors that I thought made me look like I had bruised eyes. The formulas are great. There are a lot of outstanding shades in this palette. Again, it's just not my favorite. I'm surprised that the deepest shade is not that deep. Would I get it again? Yes, 100%, definitely. But I also collect the Pat McGrath palettes. If I was only going to have like one or two, this wouldn't be one of them. As much as I love this shade, I really do. I love this shade right here. It goes from that pink to shimmery gold. Mm, so beautiful. It's lovely. And again, the artwork is just so gorgeous and mystical and I don't think it matches the palette really. The color story just confuses me. I'm confused by the color story, but it is unique. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent in love with it, but I do like it. I do, I do like things about it. And like I said, standout shades, 
beautiful formula, very easy to work with. And I was able to get a very pretty look that I like a lot. So I'll have to play around with it more. Again, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for joining me. Um, let me know if you're gonna pick this up. I'm curious to know everyone else's thoughts on this. I'm just so curious because I think it could have been better. I think my expectations were higher for this color story. And I'm curious to know what you think. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'd love if you'd subscribe to my channel. I'll bring you much more on Pat McGrath and just all things makeup, sparkles, and whatnot. I hope that you're having a wonderful, magical day and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.